Welcome to the video today, my friends. As you may or may not have already realized, we are going to be uh, doing something. Um, this is something I've thought about for a long time. I get a lot of questions about it. So we're gonna make a video about it. We're just gonna be doing some uh, tips, uh, beginner tips for Blitz Mode. I've got a list pulled up here on my phone and we're just gonna go through it and uh, we're gonna talk about it and uh, hopefully these tips help you guys out. Um, if you're an end game player, this might not help you as much unless you're just really unsure about how Blitz works. This is just gonna be a very basic uh, guide and overview on how to be successful in Blitz, especially when you're first starting off the game or maybe just Maybe you just never really knew how to be good at Blitz. So that's what this is. But if you are an end game player, you know, you can watch for uh, for comedy and uh, great times. I lost my list. Oh, there it is, don't worry. But the first tip that we're gonna have, that we're looking at, is going to be to make sure you go wide on your roster. Now, what does this mean? Because whenever people ask me what they should be working on in the beginning of the game, I always say, make sure you build up your defenders. So you do want to build up your defenders, right? Because you need a good arena team. Arena teams give you cores, and uh, the more cores you have, the better. I have never been at a point in my life where I've said, man, I have too many cores. And I've been, I rank, you know, top 10 sometimes, top 20, top 50, and I never have enough. So you want to go wide on your roster. Now, what does that mean? Um, you want to have teams that can be used all over the place. So you may have minion teams that can be used for the first little bit in Blitz. Uh, that's good. I don't really recommend powering these up too, too much, but just enough to win in like the first tier of Blitz, if that makes sense. But of course, when you're um, when you're a new player, don't power up minions at all. Maybe like later down the road, that's a thing. Um, but you want to have teams, right? So you want to have enough teams. And I'll show you, let me show you what I mean. I have a ton of different teams here and I use all of these for Blitz when I'm playing. Um, certain ones are different variants. So for example, I don't use both of these, but depending on the situation, um, you can switch and swap. Them. So, I mean, there's tons of teams in here and uh, that's what I mean. So for example, you're gonna be, oh, Combs, I can't, I don't have that stuff. And I understand, I'm not expecting you to have this stuff. Um, if you had this stuff, then you wouldn't be watching this video. So for these teams, what I'm getting at is like you want to go wide. So like I have good defenders, you know what I mean? So let's see. So I have good defenders, right? And I have good shield. I have good brotherhood. I have good uh, guardians and Minerva, Spider-Verse, Wakanda. But as you can also see, like a lot of these teams are not finished, right? Like these teams aren't maxed out. Like these guys are like tier 8, 9, 10, but they still make a solid team. Same here, tier 8, 9, 10. Um, but they still make solid teams. Same here, 8, 9, 10. And so they don't have to be maxed out. Now, granted, like these teams I have more. Well, you know, that's not even true either. He, these two are finished. These three are finished, sorry. But then he's like tier 9. And I think he's tier 10. I just haven't finished them. But these teams still work for Blitz. So like these guys aren't finished. They're like 10 and 11. Uh, this team's pretty much finished. Woo! This team right here is pretty much finished. But that's because it's like end game stuff. Uh, this team's pretty much finished, and then this team is in pretty good shape too. So it's like uh, the better teams are finished, but I didn't just sit there and focus and be like, okay, I gotta, gotta just get this last gear piece to get, uh, you know, Storm to tier 13 because I gotta finish this team now. Like, you want to go wide, um, so like kind of like tier like eight, nine, ten. Um, if it's your arena team, I kind of recommend to go to like 11 if possible because the the there's a stat. A huge like stat depravity between gear from uh, 10 to 11 and 11 to 13 essentially so unless you're doing it for fear of the darkness which of course I do recommend Ultron is the best character in the game um, but that's a different video for a different time you want to uh, maybe get to about tier 10 11 and then work on something else um, maybe if you're a beginner player that's tier 9 maybe that's tier 8 and then you work on something else that's for you to decide kind of like what the investment you want to put in that team is and then go from there it's a meta team probably like 9 or 10 but if you feel like you're dragging your feet you don't have enough teams to play with uh, it can't hurt but at the same time you're always gonna be like farming shards and stuff so it's like kind of the way I look at it is that when I finish another team with shards or I get them into a playable state with shards um, but they don't have any gear then I usually switch to them next tip that we can just stay on this screen and look at you want to use your weak teams first. So you might be saying, why? Because you can build your multiplier. So for example, if you see my list, this team doesn't count. This is a meme team that I just keep at the bottom for fun because I love Ultimus. 
But um, so you start at the bottom at 150, 173, 185, 214, 242, 216. Um, this is like a variant of this team, so I keep them together. It doesn't necessarily, it's not really in order there. Um, but then 216, 225, 243, 271, 234, 259. 271, 256. So that's not necessarily in order near the end because the end doesn't matter so much uh, when you're that close because you just want sure to win teams at the end. But so when you start at the beginning what or at the lowest, what happens is you build your multiplier up. The higher your multiplier, the more points you get. Obvious. But the higher power your team is, the higher power enemies you face, and then you also get more points. So even in the beginning, that can make a bit of a difference when you don't have that many teams because you're able to use the multiplier to your advantage. So like instead of getting, I don't know, say you get 10,000 points from winning with this team at whatever tier you're in. Okay, well if you're gonna get 10,000 from that, you go up to this team that's almost double the power, you probably get like 18, 19, maybe even 20,000 points from it. And um, that can be a, a significant difference when you don't have very many teams that can help you maybe get to the next milestone that your goal is for. The next tip, we're gonna stay at this screen once again. I think that this one's important. This one can be really like hard sometimes. This can really mess you up. And it did mess me up for a long time actually. But uh, you need to keep your teams balanced. And so what I mean by that is, Sinister Six is a decent example of this, except for uh, Green Goblin. Don't pay attention to him. He's, don't worry about him. If you look at it, you want to keep your teams balanced. So 26,000, 26,000, 26,000, 29,000. That way you get like uh, balanced matches. If you have one character that is way stronger and sometimes you can't help it because of red stars, that is unfortunately true. If you have a character that's like way stronger, you're going to face teams that either their average power is going to be higher. So like your average power on this Sinister Six team is 26,000. And so, because of Green Goblin, if you're facing a team power that has an average power of 35,000, for example, that's going to be a much harder match because every character on that team is going to be 10,000 power stronger than you. So you want to keep it as balanced as possible. So another pretty decent example is the Kree team here. Uh, they're really, really close. Um, Oracle and Noble are a little low. So one way to kind of get around the issue uh, of team balancing because it's hard right so like certain red stars can boost your characters way out of this world i mean look at this team we've got 64,000, 61,000, 28 28 32. one way to kind of uh, change that is to have it so your damage dealers are the big time stronger people that makes the difference because you can take people out that way so for example if your damage dealers are the weak ones you're essentially you're not going to be able to do anything against the enemy teams um, because you don't have any damage and they're all more powerful than you but you may be able to swing it if you have like good damage and they still may be pow more powerful than you but if you play it smart you can use it to your advantage and that can take care of it i think that that's really the only exception so uh next tip is uh you want to make sure that your teams have solid synergy so for example when you pick a team all right so we'll pick brotherhood you can see like you got all these numbers and stuff. And so that's basically like different things that they do for each other, that their kits work together. And while these things are happening, this makes your team so much stronger. So a lot of people, I mean, you might just throw in characters that you like to play with. You might just throw in characters that feel good. And that's okay, especially in the beginning. Um, but you wanna be working towards synergies. So the synergies, they just make a difference. They can make up for power being not there. You know what I mean? Like you could get bonus I guess opportunities, bonus things, like it's gonna be better. You might get bonus attacks, you might get bonus, like you know, like abilities and things. That, um, like for example, with Green Goblin, on a Spider-Verse Allies turn, rem uh, choose two random enemies if they have a positive re effect, remove one of them. Okay, so if you, every time your Spider-Verse goes, that's gonna fire off. So while he's a good character without Spider-Verse, if you put him on a Spider-Verse team, he's constantly removing things, and that's what you want. That's just kind of what I mean there. Um, you definitely want as many synergies as possible, but also at the same time, you have to keep the other tips in mind. The teams have to remain balanced and everything else. So now another tip um, that maybe is kind of like back and forth on this one, right? So you have a million characters in this store. Who do you buy? What do you buy? That's a different guide in and of itself. Uh, that's very complicated, comprehensive. If you guys know Valley Flyin, he has a uh, new player farming guide coming out very soon, updated. So you may want to check that out or leave comment if that's something that everybody's interested in. I will make a video on it myself. Occasionally, you want to buy these blitz orbs. One reason you get rescue now, uh, second reason is it kind of can help 
with it going wide on the roster because it, for, it just gives you other characters, plus you're getting gold and rescue. So that's just, the gold is the secret though. A lot of people don't realize that if you open a decent bit of these, you get gold. And that helps a lot because gold is by far the largest bottleneck in this game right now. That's what I recommend is occasionally, like don't spend all your stuff on this, but maybe like, I, mean, I don't know, maybe like once a day open a blitz orb or maybe once a day open two blitz orbs and then the rest using the store that's again gonna have to be up to you to decide so the next one uh this one's pretty cool because this is brand new that they've started doing is uh, you have these blitz milestones and then this stuff can really help newer players because you can get gear uh you can get some abcs it's not a ton but it will definitely help new players you can get like these gear orbs and uh, that's super helpful and these are not super hard things to do this will also help you go wide in your roster to have these characters so for me this is easy because i have all these characters i'm good to go i can use all of these characters for this but maybe you don't have these maybe you have a few of them but uh this is a big deal because you can use these and this will definitely help you out um when it comes to this because you get the extra gear and everything else but keep an eye on these milestones these characters occasionally change but this is a really cool thing that fox next is doing now that helps a lot of players i mean it helps me out and i've been playing for forever so it'll definitely help you guys out so I think that's a big deal. Pay attention to these. And you're probably not going to be able to max them out. But even if you just get to five, that's more than you had before. You know what I mean? And you really don't have to do anything different. Something else to check is uh, make sure you use this stat screen. If you're not sure about a matchup, if you're a little unsure, uh, you can come check it out and you can look at what they have. So you can see on this team, uh, probably the biggest threat on this team is the Hulk. And he's the weakest character on their team. So you might be able to go into this one and be able to beat it a lot easier than you think because the Hulk is just not good if you have enough to spell. You can get rid of Captain America's taunt, which will make him useless, and then you're able to hop in and get this team. So it's important to check that um, because you never know what you may or may not be able to beat just based on the stats because not everything is balanced on the enemy teams. And finally, guys, the last and final tip I have for you is be aware of how much you're playing. And what I mean by that is, is that it's really easy to get burnt out on the game, especially when you're sitting playing Blitz constantly on your phone and you just don't even think about it and you're just playing, 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 it's really, really easy to get burnt out, frustrated, irritated, not want to play anymore. I was in that place for a little while, then I had a friend recommend to me to just stop playing Blitz. If you're watching this video, you know who you are. So that I think that that's important, and I recommend anybody to just be aware of how they're feeling. If they're just feeling burnt out, I would say cut out Blitz. You know, maybe just do milestones. Maybe don't play at all. This is just something I'm thinking about because it's like, man, like, I almost quit, man, look, now I'm making videos, you know what I mean? So it, it can definitely change how you're feeling. Don't go too crazy on Blitz if you feel like you're on your phone too much, or if, I don't know, if your kids are like, Dad, get off your phone, or your wife or girlfriend's like, man, you're on your phone all the time. Just kind of think about it, and it's like, man, like, what, what's more worth it? You know what I mean? That's just practical advice for me because I was in that place. You know, I had people saying, man, you're on your phone all the time. Like, people stopped asking me to hang out because I was just playing Blitz all the time, and it's crazy. So don't I recommend be just very aware of that or ask people to keep you accountable because it can lead to burnout. It can lead to broken relationships. And you know, it's kind of like crazy. I'm getting real serious right now. Just be careful. Okay, just be careful. You don't want to get too deep into it. But all that said, guys, I hope that this guide is helpful. Um, I got to run, but appreciate you guys. Make sure to follow on Twitch. Uh, link is in the description below. If this video helped you, leave a like. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. I will respond. I answer all comments. Yeah, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We're doing really well recently. We've gained a lot of new subscribers recently, and it's very exciting. So next road is to uh, 5,000, guys. We're doing awesome. We blew past three, so now we're on our way to five. Thank you guys so much for the support on the channel, and uh, we'll talk soon, all right? Thank you guys so much for coming by.